my friends. Glad to see you made it. For we're gathered here today in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. He's alive. My friends, today we're uh, doing some Torah teaching, Torah study. We'll be going through the book of Genesis. You know, that's the thing with learning uh, from the Torah. You know, what is Torah's uh, living law, right? It's, uh, that's Jesus, you know. I'm the way, the truth. <laughs> So it's a way of life, and so why does God always want us to go back and, hey, you guys, you need to observe this stuff. You need to know it and keep it in your mind. Meditate on it. And when you come over here to Genesis and, and all these books, first book of Moses, you know, first book of the Torah, uh, it's a family. It's about families. So why does God want us to, to know about families? Well, because it's reality. It's real life. And that's why he wants us to, to meditate on these family issues. You know, that's the thing. Well, 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 here we are today. And our family issues, wherever they may be, are exactly the same as all these people. Whoa. And it's true. Uh, there's a lot of weird stories in the Bible. You know, that's the thing. The uh, Bible... You know, it don't it just don't leave nothing out. You know, if you took the time to go through and read these stories, uh, you find out there's some bad stuff happening, and, and not just bad stuff, but bad stuff that are, happens to God's children, and, and how that bad stuff that comes in to God's families does disrupt things, does make things bad. Uh, you know, life gets rough, but. One thing I always love, I'm, we're going to talk about Joseph's story because I've always been fascinated with Joseph and, and his story. And so one of the things you, you recognize, all the Bible is about, you know, to recognize Jesus Christ and who's Jesus and it's about God. And so what we got to find out is it's about relationship and worship. As Jesus says, we worship God in spirit and in truth. And it's to have a relationship with the Spirit of the Living God. We must have Him manifested in our in our daily lives, and so that's exactly why you see these family stories and all that stuff. And why I love Joseph's story is because no matter what, when God promises you something, man, no matter who tells you no, uh, it it comes true. And not only does it come true, uh, there is nothing to stop God's will. Nothing to stop God's will. Even if you tried. In fact, the, the more you try to stop God's will, the, the, the more you're actually uh, a part of God's will. Because God wants to overcome your, your trying to, you know, deny him. You know? <laughs> and he likes to prove humanity wrong. So... Let's begin with the prayer today is about hope. Heavenly Father, Jesus, we come to you, Father, for guidance, wisdom, understanding of that wisdom. We want to forever grow closer to you, God, and know who you are. We, we, we just don't want to know a name. We, we want to know you and personally. And we want you to know us personally too, Father. So I ask you today to bless this read, this message. Open all of our hearts and minds to, to receive your love, grace, mercy, forgiveness. And to remind us, Father, of how mighty is your word. When your word says, I promise, how mighty is that? And so I ask you to remind us of that. For it is your kingdom, your power, that we are forever seeking. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So, I want to talk about hope today and restoring our hope. You know, that's the thing. Joseph, uh, he has a dream. And it's weird because, you know, remember at this point in the story, Israel is now, Jacob turns to Israel. So he had like, you know, that 
wrestle with the angel. And remember, he's like 90 years old. And so if you go through the Bible, and one of the things you notice is all the women are like 70, 80, 90 years old when they have kids. And what it is, is look at how when God makes promise, the promise is what we are put our faith in. It's And that's what all it's all about, right? It was the promise with Abraham of, hey, your, your descendants are going to see this. I'd be like the stars. More than the sand of the seashore. That's how many you have. But it, it's about the, the promise. Do you believe in the promise? And, and that's the thing. It's not about a physical seed. Seeds. You know, human seeds. This is about one seed. Uh, the seed of Christ. The seed of God. The promise of God. And, and how everybody who believed in the promise obtained everything God promised. And even those who didn't believe in it, he still, they still didn't update the promise because it's an interesting story. So, Joseph, he's about 17 years old, right? He's tending the flocks and everything. He's his dad's favorite. He's Rachel's son. You know, there was a promise before, hey, you're going to go meet Rachel and then Leah and all that, but that's a different story. But, but the promise was with Rachel, right? And, and Rachel, if you go through her story, she, these are faithful people. These people love God. They can cry out from their bellies and their hearts, and, and God answers prayers. Now what? God answers prayers, and he keeps his promise. How much more hope do we need? And then we looked at it, no matter even what happens in life, uh, God keeps his promises <laughs> and he answers prayers so the promise was always with Joseph you know and then Joseph comes later and he has dream right and they're out in the field and they have all these stocks whatever I don't know if you're a farmer person you farmer up all the stocks and like a thing and it looks like a big man kind of so there's all these things and they all oh, and they all bow down to mine but, but remember, he's the youngest of, of the 11 other brothers, so they, uh, they, uh, you know, he's 17, they're, they're 30s, they're 40s, you know, Judas are, and, uh, and them are much older, right? Reuben's like the oldest, and, and so they're, they're, these guys are 50s, 40s, right? And here comes the young buck, you know, <laughs> dad's. Favorite, you know, this thing always the youngest kids, you no, know, the older sons and daughters beat mom and dad down. So then the little kid, the, the youngest, comes in and they get all the treatment because they're like worn out. But anyway, <laughs> that's usually how it goes. <laughs> so the littlest one, he's favorite, right? And Rachel, and Rachel died at birth, and, and so. It's close to his heart when he thinks, and she died in birth, you know, with Benjamin later, so, anyway. Anyway, stick to the story, right? So he has a dream, and, and then, you know, God, he always comes in two dreams, and everything God does is in two witnesses, two or three witnesses, so to confirm. So even like Paul says in the Bible, you know, later in the New Testament, you know, you test the spirits, test all spirits, and... and and then God always confirms uh, what what He says. You know, we pray out, and God answers. And he'll always confirm and answer in, in twos and uh, our, our threes. Do, do, do we want to listen? <laughs> you know, remember uh, Gideon. I don't believe you, Lord. Turn that uh, you know skin or whatever the rug wet and all the ground dry. And then it was wet and all the ground was dry. No, I don't. We'll do it one more time, only this time make all the ground wet and, and that one dry, right? And God did it. And then you're going to do it like a third time. <laughs> so, but God answers and God does confirm it. And sometimes we don't like the answer. But, but always keep in focus in mind that God doesn't want to harm us, hurt us. He has a plan. Now, right there is the thing. Joseph believes and trusts in God's plan. You know, Jacob 
when they have and later he has another dream you know and they have uh, uh these 12 stars and then the moon and the sun were there and they all the bowed down to to joseph's star right jesus christ is the star of day but jesus christ is the morning star <laughs> And so how will we know who Jesus is, you know? Well, we got to kind of know all these stories so that when he would come, we, we would recognize him. And uh, so, and, you know, everybody was all upset. And even Israel says, oh, you really think me and your mom and everybody's going to bow down to you one day? But, but he didn't mock him. Everybody else in the family mocked Joseph, but, but uh, he didn't. He believed him. He didn't really say anything, just kept it in his heart. And so right away, you know, here you got the son, favorite son, the dad. And, and uh, all the brothers are jealous and mad, you know, because uh, he's going to give all the inheritance, you know, the right to be leader of all their tribes or whatever their little area is and uh so they don't like him and so now he's 17 you know and he's just you know dad's eyes and ears right so israel is now old and joseph go out and check on them boys they don't do nothing they're out there screwing around all the time go out there count the sheep you know make sure they're watering and feeding yes dad so he goes out you know and Sure enough, you know, he always comes back to his dad. Hey, they've been bad. They even eat some of your stuff out there, and they're not even sharing none with the dead. And so they, again, they get all mad and upset and all that stuff, so they decide they're going to kill him, right? Isn't that the best way to do it? If I can't, if God's will isn't with me, then I'll just... You know, destroy everybody around, and, and then there's nobody left but me, and, and I will be all of God's will. I'll force God's hand to, to agree with me, right? We're going to force God to agree with me instead of us believing in the promise or, or His word or His control or His power. Say, we're going to not grab God's hand and I'll show Him, right? And we'll, you find out in the Bible, uh, that's a pretty dangerous thing to do for yourself. Very dangerous. And it hurts only yourself because, you know, you see through the story. You know, and again, Israel says, go out, check on them guys. So he goes out and, and along the way he sees some man, I don't know, just somebody, angel or messenger. Right? Tells him, what are you looking for? Oh, I'm looking for my other brothers. And all they went right over there. There they are. Go get them. And, you know, tells them a little message. And then so he goes, finds the brothers. And before he even gets to the brothers, they had already, so that's the thing. God knows all things. And he knows what's in the hearts and minds of what's going on. And we can't lie to God. So they're already got it in mind. They're going to kill Joseph. And then they see him out and about. Oh, there he is. Let's kill him. Start concocting this plan. Reuben, you know, is like, no, no, we can't kill him. That's dad's favorite kid, man. We'll give him a heart attack. I mean, they, the dad loved uh, the boy so much that, that he gave him a coat of many colors. Wow, have you ever seen that coat of many colors? Have you ever seen... Book Revelations and that that many colors. Did you ever notice the foundation of God's throne and the many colors of that foundation? Wow! And then he says, you know, hey, one day that you know, like, okay, wouldn't that be like God Himself? We came down and landed right in your heart. Didn't you guys know you're the you're the holy temple people? So yeah, God came with that coat of many colors, and we're not talking a coat of skins. We're talking like a coat of God himself. Because isn't that the, the promise of Jesus Christ? Anybody who believes in me, trusts in me with all their heart, mind, and soul. The promise is, I myself, not just I, but myself and my Father. We will come and live with you, and eat with you, and drink with you. 
and be with you every day to the end of time. Whoa, that's one hell of a promise. Can you believe it? Can you believe it? That's the thing. Can you believe it? Because then everything in the world says, hell, you can't believe that. You can believe in hell, you can believe in fire, you can believe in murder, you can believe in hate, uh, but you can't believe in doubt. No. Uh -uh. And if you act like you believe in it, man, there, there's a uh, look out for that one. Another one flew the cuckoo's nest, right? Because when you believe it, you know, God is with you. Uh, change your life and everybody around you to be changed because they can see it, right? And what do they see? Uh, God's promise isn't going to leave you. That's what they see. Your faith in, in the promise and grabbing it and it being fulfilled. So they throw, they decide to come up with an idea they're going to throw Joseph in the well, right? They're out in the middle of nowhere and all of a sudden there's a well. <laughs> And uh, into the cistern, you know, they dig a whole way down there and gonna throw them down the well, right? Come up with an idea, you know, hey, th th that's how rotten they are, were. You know, they come up with an idea, well, what we'll do is we'll tell Dad some wild beast, you know, lion came, ate him, and, uh, and then we won't have our blood, we can't, we, we won't know we murdered him. Right? Because, you know, and, by the way, did you guys know uh, murder is against God's will? You can't do it. And so, I, well, they came up with an idea. They thought they could hide from God. Accomplish their will. Not God's will, but their will. And get away scot-free. Nobody would know. <laughs> and blame it on something else, right? That the lion. Or an animal, or a beast, whatever. So they they soaked the coat in many colors and blood. Did you ever see Jesus there hanging on the cross, all full of blood? Right, put that coat in many colors, covered it in blood, and gave it to Dad. Ah, look at that. Go to Israel. He was so upset he, the spirit left him. Cried so hard the spirit left him. So upset. They didn't call him, if you read the story, he didn't call him Israel no more. He went back to Jacob. Like, like he went in his house and didn't care anymore. He just sat there and waited till he died. But that wasn't the end of the story. Anyway, here we go. And he's there in the well, right? And then they come up with the idea, well, we can't kill him. You know, let's sell him to some slaves. <laughs> and, and ain't it weird because it's Ishmaelites that come and, and, and you don't hear too much about Ishmael or, or the Ishmaelites, but, but they're a tribe and, and those were descendants of Ishmael, right? You know, they didn't just disappear that they were still living and we can look today and they're still here still living and comes their slave traders they buy and sell slaves kind of weird so take him sell him to Egypt of all places to Egypt and he becomes you know Potiphar's slave or whatnot but while he's a slave is what they just found out was man this man has a lot of wisdom He's a young man, but he's full of wisdom, right? They didn't see that he was a great worker or a great slave, but, but he was like a, the smartest slave, a, a really smart guy who had a lot of wisdom. And so it intrigued them. And isn't it funny how there in the house of Pharaoh, don't believe in God, it's like, you know, representation of, you know, there's... Uh, it's a bad place, you know, darkness and, and unbelief and, and, you know, the snake people and bad. <laughs> so it's there in Pharaoh's land, right? They don't believe in, in you know, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, and Jacob. So 
They don't even know who he is. They don't even know what a Hebrew was, right? And then a Hebrew guy comes and, wow, who's this guy? You know, you only have one God? How ridiculous is that, man? You're so weak. We have a God for every day and everything, man. And, and, right? And a lot of that, they're gods. And uh, it's sorry to say the same today. It was uh, some kind of a euphoric type drugs, you know. That's why the burning of incense and, and all those kind of things, you know, they, they were like uh, witch doctors or, or voodoo people, you know what I mean? They're conjuring up into dark spirits living in a dark realm. And so, but God wanted to change things, you know, that's the thing, remember that. God wants to change, and he has always, even like today, we're, we're changing always for the better. For the bigger, the better, and the prosperity of God's kingdom here on earth and in heavens, right? So, Joseph finds favor. And now God moves into the hearts of those people because of Joseph's character, right? He goes in, and, and later in the story, you know, he goes in and they talk to Pharaoh and bow down to Pharaoh or you're going to die. And Joseph says, well, there's only one thing I cannot do. Cannot do it. Will not, and even if it causes me death. Well, two things. Lie. He, he, I will always be honest. Don't even ask me the truth or anything because I will tell you the truth and I don't want you to kill me for it. So don't even ask because I only tell the truth. Right? And I never bow down to any God but the Lord Almighty, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and my father Jacob. Right? And that's it. And kill me if you want. And, you know, faith. Right? So he gets thrown in the well. They boys want to get rid of him. God's promise. Right? They're, they're not going to fulfill God's promise. We'll grab God's hand. But, but nothing can stop it. He rises up out of the well. Jesus rises up out of the ground. Huh? The, 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 the 12 tribes, right? His own people. His own brothers. You know, he's a Nazarite from Nazarene and Galilean. And they killed him. Right? So, and they go, and he has some problems. The Potiphar's wife, right, tests his character. That's the thing. Devil uses lust, jealousy, uh, vanity, all those things to uh, tempt us. God doesn't tempt us. It's the heart of man questioning God's authority is what it is. Questioning God's authority, right? So the woman comes, wants to mess around, sleep with Joseph. And, no, no sleeping with you. I, I would never do that. You know, that guy is my friend, you know, <laughs> not just your husband, but, but my friend, your husband. And that would be violating God's laws. We have, like, you know, and it wasn't laws at that time. It was like morals. That's, and that's what it was. Morals. It was written in his heart. No, I'm a good guy. And I'm, I'm not like that. <laughs> right? So she, she gets all mad and all that and ends up getting thrown in prison. Now, remember, God makes the promise through the dream. And Joseph believes it. I know he carried that in his heart. Tough, man. I mean, God speak to you. Dream or visions or angels or whatever. Uh, you're like, I got that one. And I ain't letting it go. So, nothing could stop him, right? Couldn't kill him in the whale, there's a slave room. You know, most of the people there go to the rock quarry. But he's now in the house of Pharaoh, into the main courts, you know? And then he's there in the prisons, right? Ain't that life, you know, kind of up and we're down and we're up and we're down. On the mountaintop and then thrown right down to the gully and so, how do we overcome all that? Well, we got to see. That's Jesus. Is he, is he all that up and down? Jesus, flat road. The straight and narrow. Easy to travel. Right? And that's what Jesus does. But you got to walk the, the, the straight road. And what is it? Walking by faith. 
Why not just walking by faith? Walking by faith without fear. Hey, we should walk like Jesus. He walked with faith without fear all through his life. And that was his strength. You know, his faith without fear. Right? It ain't as dark as it was in Jesus' day, I tell you that now. So, so don't lose faith and hope and say, oh, we're all going to be destroyed. Well, I, I believe in Jesus Christ and his promise. He will return and restore. And when the Lord God Almighty is here on earth, what the heck, man, get back. He's here. So, so, so if he was there, uh, what do you got to worry about? Other than, are we going to fight him or be a part of him? Right? So, Joseph, he goes to the thing, and he has a dream. Now, now he's interpreting dreams. Right? Ain't that weird? He has a dream, and now he's Mr. Dream Interpreter. And so he's interpreting dreams down in the uh, jail. You know? And trust me, we, we know what jails are like today. What do you think they were like uh, 4,000 years ago? I bet they were pretty dirty. You know, that's the thing. It's throughout a million years, or I don't know how long, 4,000 years, we've been scrunching cockroaches every day. How many cockroaches do you think were there in that day? Probably full, man. It's like, ah, oh, where's the rats to come eat the cockroaches? <laughs> Just putting a visual there. <laughs> anyway. So, interprets the dreams, right? Hey, man, I have this dream, and this crow's going to come and whatever and eat my eyes out and stuff and the other guy has a dream and he's carrying his drink and he gives his drink to the whatever and I don't know and not exactly that dream but you know anyway he interprets the dream and the one guy and it comes true right and that thought was like God if God says something whether it be dream vision his word whatever it is it, it comes true because God is the truth truth and grace came through Jesus Christ Right? So so whatever he says, it comes true. So if he speaks of future things, of things today, or, or whatever God says, it, it's rock, rock, solid truth. That's this thing of the foundation. Where are we going to dig down deep? Wise man, he digs down deep to the rock. And then begins to build the foundation. Right? That's what the wise man does. <laughs> so, same thing. Jesus Christ is the rock. From the rock, we, we build and it's grace and love. You know, that's the thing. Look at the grace and love, God, that, that Joseph's getting when it looked grim. Oh, God. I mean, we're human beings. And don't talk much about the actual feelings of Joseph, but hey, I'm a man. And, wow, I bet he was questioning. Well, he's in prison, you know, that's the thing. I bet he's wondering. I bet he's wondering, you know, when, he, when he's laying in the bottom of that well. I mean, he cried out with great tears. He cried out, cried out so loud, so hard, that that's what changed their mind. For the brothers to, to say, no, we can't listen to this anymore. It was weird. That's the thing. Is, did, 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 did any of it take away from God's promise? Even when times in, in, in life and in the world, they, there's a lot of talk of world war and fear. Take the fear. And the fear, the word fear, and everything that causes fear, and rabbi, because everything that does that, that's lie. With God, there is no fear. You take that and get rid of that. Don't believe the lies. Understand, God's merciful, merciful. Nobody knows the day and the hour when God returns, but when he does, 
You know him because you know love. Right? And God is love. And ain't that what it's about? Look at how God loved Joseph. Right? All the brothers didn't love him. Right? Dad loved him, but nobody else did. Look at how much God loved Joseph. Right? No matter what circumstances in life, look at how much he loved Joseph through that whole story. Right? And then later, they, they, when he interprets the dream correctly, Pharaoh hears about it has this really bad dream, right? Seven days uh, or whatever, uh, had a dream of these seven cows or something. And they were all fat, full, and then all of a sudden this, they, they turned into, you know, skeletons. Began to devour each other. Oh, devour each other, isn't that what we're doing today? Devouring each other? As in a Christian nation, in, in even there in the Google world, uh, just turned and began to devour. Now I was talking about a famine. Oh, oh what if maybe what if it was a famine of the word of God? America, people don't worry, read the Bible. What if it was a famine of the word of God that was in their land, that was plaguing them, that was hurting them because they didn't have truth and grace. Right? Same today. Same today. So, he interprets Pharaoh's dream. Right? Has the corn, or I don't know, my Bible says corn, but I know for a fact corn only grew in America. So it wasn't corn, but, but these stalks of wheat, <laughs> but these, so these stalks of grain grow up and, and it grew up all nice and then the grain began to you know, grow faces or whatever and devour each other. So it was seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. Right? And notice that everything's done. Seven, seven's fourteen. Uh, Jacob had to do seven years uh, work for Lisa. And then seven more, or uh, Leah. And then seven more years of work for uh, Rebecca. Right? Kind of weird. So then they got seven years of plenty. Seven years of, of a lot of good word of God, right? Kind of. Then seven years of famine. No word of God. And what happens with no word of God? Famine. Oh, devour and bad stuff. Begin seeking for help. Right, the 12 brothers and all the family, they're still out in the land of Canaan. Joseph's there in Egypt, right? So, Pharaoh says, wow! And they asked everybody in town, come, all the smartest people, decipher that dream. Nobody could. Pharaoh says, wow, you are so wise and smart. We need to put somebody in charge because, you know, if we, and Joseph comes up with the idea because of his wisdom, if we store 10% grain, you know, whatever ties, 10% grain <laughs> through the things and the years, and through that 10% of the storage, it'll store up and build in storerooms. If you ever reached into the storeroom of the living God, oh man, he's big, and he's full of riches and glory, wisdom, life, hope. In faith. All those come from God. Right? And sure enough, after seven years, you know, and Joseph's now in charge. He's not in charge. They, they give him new clothes. Dress him in purple. And, and see, went from a coat of many colors to this beautiful, you know, uh, dress him in this fine linen and, and put this thing on his neck and all that stuff. And now he's number two, right? Number two, not, not, 
Okay, here's Pharaoh. The word Pharaoh is God on earth. It, it was son of Ra. And then their thing, they believed Ra or whatever what was God. And Pharaoh, right, is son of God. A man on earth represented as God. Right? Jesus Christ, the, the, the living God. Right? And then Pharaoh, you know, false gods, hands over his coat to the true son of God, you know, uh, uh, the promise. Willingly just hands it over the, the coat. Gives him a new name, and I can't pronounce the name, but it's a high, like high priest guy. He, he's the wise man. Even Pharaoh asks him what to do because he's not, he's not number one, but he's number two. He knows everything. And even I go to him, right? And isn't that Jesus Christ? Everybody who calls to Jesus Christ, this is one name, one name on earth which men can call on to be saved, to have a relationship with God, and there's no other name. None. Right? So, now we go to Joseph, or Jesus, for advice. <laughs> prayer. God answers prayers. <laughs> right? God answers prayers. So, and if you notice, Jesus then passes that coat. If you look in the book of Revelations, and it's kind of hard to understand, but, but there's a woman in there, you know, and, and uh, that's the thing, that's his bride, and he's describing it as, remember, if the world hated you, they hated him first. So nobody's ever gonna believe that's his bride because they didn't believe he was the son of God. Only him and God did. So, remember that if anybody denies Jesus Christ living in you, uh, they hated him, man. It's him living in you that they hate, not you yourself. So deflect those bad stuff. Anyway, so, now Joseph's number two. The, the starvation starts. I don't know, you guys, the Spirit of the Lord was... With Israel, right? And the spirit left Israel. Where did the spirit go? Maybe to his son, Joseph. Them boys there all had dark hearts. In the end, Paul oh, killed the old man. In sorrow. Sorrow. He was never the same. It affected the whole family. Never the same. And so, seeking help, seeking relief, refuge, deliverance from, from, from the drought of no word, no God, no rain, God rain. It's all symbolic. It's a wonderful story. It's about family, life, real life, reality. So they seek. Twelve brothers come in. They're not all twelve. They leave Benjamin back with dad, you know. The brothers come in looking for help, bring in some whatever they could find for gold, silver, cups, spoons, forks, knives, you know, <laughs> right? Uh, seeking help. Remember, Jesus says, hey, go all in uh, to the rich man. Sell everything you got. And then follow me. What? No, seeking help, seeking salvation, seeking deliverance. How are you going to seek it out if you're not willing to follow? The, the seek, you got to, you know, when you're seeking, you're doing, that's like an action word. So, I seek out, and Joseph notices that, you know, they're, them's his brothers. <laughs> and they couldn't recognize him. So I want to remind you that, you know, you look in Egypt and there's a lot of uh, black people and uh, they couldn't, they, they're black people. We always want white people glory. Yeah, I'd rather just be a humble servant, a child of the most high, but I, I just want you to know that. 
They couldn't tell him the difference between any other uh, Egyptian. And same happened to Paul. Right? He's in Greece, right? Rome, Turkey. Oh, go, go there today and look around. Hey, Paul, are you the Egyptian? Did he look, what, what's an Egyptian look like? <laughs> so again, Paul was a black man. And glory be to you all. Children of the Most High. So, anyway, <coughs> they come looking for help, right? And then he begins testing them to see if they repented. If they repented, right? Now you bring that brother back here. I gotta make sure you guys ain't thieves and robbers and all that stuff. And then he puts gifts in their bag. You know, they paid for all their food and their grain, and then he put all the money that they gave him and put it back. Right? Right? Isn't that weird? Give to God, and then God puts it back. Real secret. Like, you don't even know it, man. He just, like, snicks it in there, and then you're walking along, and, Hey, where'd you get that from? What? <laughs> and then they get caught as, like, thieves. Right? And so then they have to bring the brother back. Oh, we can't give you this brother, man. One of our brothers, and notice they danced around the story. Now, I'm not going to tell the truth. One of our brothers went up missing, and Dad was destroyed. Destroyed. They, they had the repentance because they saw the destruction of Dad's heart. His heart. Right? Very sad, very, you know, he, no more Israel, Jacob's back home and dead. I mean, you can't take that kid from him. He'd kill us all. Right? So, they bring the boy back anyway. And then he lines them all up at, at a feast, at, at a dinner. All those who, who shamed him. Wronged him, hated on him, hurt him, fought against him for no other reason than because God loved him. Because God loved him. I didn't do anything. God just said he loved me. And then God proved it. But by how I over overcame it. Through the, even through the abuse, the uh, oh, disobedience of, of all of them. Sit down and, and eat. And then he tells them who he is. Look, I'm like king over all of what you see. And I'm your, your brother, your friend. And I forgive you. And I love you. Because everything you did was a part of God's will. Look, get the family and come on. I got everything here. Houses, homes, food, water, everything you need. Come on. They go back to, 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 to Jacob. And they tell him the good news. And the spirit comes back into him. And he becomes Israel again. And with great joy, happiness. Israel could, could finally pass on in, in, in peace, in, in joy. Because God's promise had been fulfilled. And even though he was unfaithful during those times, in the deeps and the depths and the depths of depression, didn't take away God's love for Israel or Joseph. Say about Jesus Christ. You know, we, we, we died with him at the cross and we live with him now. You know, a thousand years to God is like one day. One day. One day is like a thousand years to God. Each and every day, the, the earth is burning away. And each and every day, as God says, I make it brand new. In the same way we go to sleep at night, we, we sleep 
And then in the morning, it's new. Every day the grass dies, but every day there's grass is there. Every day the human beings die, and every day another one's born. God's grace, mercy is eternal, and so is his word. Right? God's grace and mercy is eternal, and so is his word. Why doesn't the world burn away? God's grace and mercy is eternal, and so is his word. Promise. Don't put your hope and your faith in anything other than God's promise. Do you think God wants to destroy the world? He's love. Understand, love. Love cannot destroy, or it wouldn't be love. Love cannot hate, or it wouldn't be love. Love never gets angry, because that's not love. It's not, that's not love. Love would never punch you, because that's not love. It would never do that. Love is gentle. Love is kindness. Love is mercy. Love is forgiving. God's forgiving riches. God's forgiveness is for all mankind. Do we want to fight it or, or receive it? Let God love Joseph. Jesus Christ says, I love you. I love you so much, I decided to make my house in you. You're the house, right? Spirit of the Lord lives in you, the same spirit that, that rises the Lord our God to life, everlasting, lives in us, all of us. Do you believe? Faith, hope, God has planned for us. Hope, put your faith in hope in God. It's promise, like Joseph. Nothing can take away God's promise or our hope or our faith, right? Can you imagine being like, you know, 400 years later? You go from a family of, I think 70 went in there. That was all our, you know, slaves and sheep herders and family, you know, in-laws and the outlaws and the heat. <laughs> I think 70 go in. Come out later, 600,000. Right? And some say two million altogether. Because they don't count women and children. Two million. Whew. How many people of that two million people walk through the, the through the ocean? All of them. All of them. How many of them do you think was about to lose their soul or their life there. They're standing at the edge of the Red Sea, at the deep side of the Red Sea, man. I mean, there's no escape. And here's the chariots burial, burying them down on you. I mean, think about that. No escape. You don't even have weapons. Nothing. These guys got weapons, chariots, shooting arrows, uh, uh, spears, horses. We've been walking for 30 days, man, and we're tired. <laughs> Hope, faith, and God's promise. Hey, they, they, they walked as though it was dry land. At when? At the moment when, when you thought there was no hope and you were a fool for having faith. And it was then. Right then, that the ocean opens, right? Here's Joseph in, in, in the well. The heavens open. Right? In prison. And isn't it everything and everybody, even 
didn't look at him. They didn't even believe in God yet. But, but the promise. Hey, you don't have to believe I'm God. And I said, I'll do it. And I'll do it. Believe in that. Be still because I am God. Be still. Look at how Joseph in his story. Be still. You don't force the hand of God. You be still, and God, the Lord Almighty, fights the battles for us. He goes out in front of us to make the way. He brings people into your lives and all that to, to provide a way and a know-how with the wisdom and all that. You just got to trust God. Remember when the people see the wisdom and the knowledge of, of Joseph, they, they, they begin to soften the hearts of people all around. And God provides the right people at the right time in their lives to help God perform his job. You know, the, 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 the deciphering the dreams in the prison, right? Getting thrown into prison. Oh, I would have never met those guys if you didn't get thrown into prison. Huh. Keeping the faith, keeping his integrity, even when tempted. God never tempts you past what you can handle. Others, I don't know, but but for us, no. All of it. Look at God's work go through and work through their lives. And it's not just life. This is everyday reality life. You can see the problems and the struggles they were going through. Right? Reuben or Judah and his two boys, they were evil in the sight of God. They're, they're have, there's like this weird... I don't know, almost like a molestation thing going on, you know, right there. And, and all the disruptive stuff going on there. And what he was doing. He's out messing around with, with, with the hookers and, and all that. But it was, and that's the thing. Who did God choose? Did this thing. You're not a bad person. You're a wonderful person. Did God choose badly? Sometimes we think in life, it was our fault we got thrown into the well. How many of you didn't think Joseph thought about that? Oh, man, if I would have <laughs> not met that guy and he pointed me in the wrong direction or something, he pointed me right into it. What the heck was that? And if I wouldn't have listened to him, I should just begin to say, I second guess him everything. But even then, it's being still and faithful in the hope of God's promise. Being faithful and hope in God's promise. We live by faith in grace. Even though we may sin or, or, or make mistakes, faith in God's forgiveness that God freely gave to, to us, the, the sinner. Faith in grace. Faith in love. Jesus Christ says, hey, just, just take it easy. Relax. And love each other. It's easy, right? <laughs> yeah. Just love each other and relax. And have hope and faith that Jesus Christ is the deliverer and savior of the world. Deliverer and savior of the world. Jesus Christ. It's all in his hands. And he's in control. Remember that. See you next time.